Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are working in the Accidental Art Journal. This is episode six and we are crashing the stash of our collage papers. So on my ta table, I have three bins. One is collage papers. And when I use something or I'm additioning something for a page, when I'm done, it typically just goes into the basket. I've got another basket for focal images and another one for sentiments. And then I work from there. But every once in a while, once the baskets get full, it's time to organize them and put them in the other storage areas. And that's what I'm doing today. So I'm just sorting them out by colors. And as you can see, the basket is very, very full. So I'm sorting by colors, greens, blues, teals, oranges, yellows, and I'm looking at what I have here. And I'm looking at each of these. Some of these are gel prints. Some of them are collage papers that I made. Some of them are failed pages or bits and bobs that just collect over time. So now that they're all sorted out, usually I will put the smaller pieces smaller quarter page and smaller in these plastic containers they measure i think 10 by 9 i can't even remember what that was and then the larger pieces larger than a quarter a half page and a full page go back in my hanging file system and i'll put a link to that organizational video so while I have them all out on my table, I am looking at them and looking for inspiration. I'm looking for things that go together or potentially go together. This is a great time to do this. So I'm going to grab, you know, four or five pieces and set them aside. And I'm going to make piles for potential pages. Now, because I typically don't have like full sheets for a complete Insta background, what I'm going to do is rip a strip kind of technique, as well as some others. And it's all going to be collaging papers down. So really all you need is your fluid matte medium or gel matte medium. So I'm just going through the colors because I'm just going to give that out and I'm going to break or add a layer to several pages in my accidental art journal. I'm just working through the colors and I can stick, stay within the color or I can pick gel prints or collage papers from a couple different colors and mix them on a page. That's a great way of mixing colors. No risk of getting mud when they're all painted. And you get all this pattern and design and interest. And I work fairly quickly. So now I have some of the, the magenta and teal here and I'm matching it to a background that I've already broken the page with some of my DIY foam stamps. So now I'm just going to rip some odd shapes, I don't like straight edges, and build some color onto this page. And I like how these gel prints that I've had mirror the patterns that I've stamped on there and that's why I've chosen them to go together. Now at this stage of the game in the Accidental Art Journal I don't know what focal image I'm going to put on here and I know that there may be a multitude of layers coming on. Each layer is going to instruct or guide the next decision. And you can see I've got some solid teal there and that really provides the contrast. I know I might also be adding paint to this at some point in time. So once I have a rough idea of where I'm going to put these things and layer up these collage bits, 
I'm just going to glue this down. And I go over the edges. I'll cut off the excess when it's dry. And often what I originally start with the composition when I'm gluing these strips down, it changes, it alters as I go. And so when I pulled out the piles, there might have been five or six different patterned papers, collage papers, and then I only ended up using three when I came down to it. Now you know how my basket ends up with so much. Ripping a strip of collage papers and gluing it down is a great way of breaking the page. It starts your color and pattern story. As I'm doing this, I'm thinking, you know, trying to think of things, maybe focal images that I have. And if I get any inspiration, I will write it on the back side of the page. Sometimes ideas come to me and sometimes they don't. This paper, as long as well as giving color and pattern, also will give texture that I can bring out at a later stage of the development of this page. Which is why I'm layering them up because it'll be thicker and you'll get those rough edges. Now I'm going to do collaging papers for several pages in this session. And that's a great thing to do with your accidental art journal. It can have a theme. I'm going to use these supplies or I'm going to add focal images. You can go in your basket of focal images and add to it. So right now we're done. So moving on to the next page. Now this page I've scraped some stencil butter on here and I'm going to add green papers that have some of that blue in them. So the blue that I scraped is in both of these gel prints. And then for whatever reason, I don't know because I really haven't done this before, I decided I'm going to cut the gel prints into rectangles and squares and glue that down. The Accidental Art Journal is a great place to try something new. Remember, this is a composition book. It's cost you a buck or two. That's it. There's no risk here. So this is a great time to experiment. Not only use up stuff that you have left over that would otherwise end up in the recycle bin, but also try new techniques, new ideas. If you like it, then it can become part of what you do when you do create. So I'm liking the look of layering these rectangles up on each other. I've got a light and a dark with the blue background. Not sure right now if I'm going to leave that white space in there, if I'm going to add some texture paste. Then I decide, ooh, I like this, turning it, kind of making a square, and then turning it on an angle. And when you are just playing, you're going to maybe become more creative.
So the, on the last one, we did rip a strip. On this one, we're cutting into squares and rectangles. You could use a punch to punch different shapes and collage those down as well. This could be an underwater scene. This could be a garden scene. And again, once this is dry, I'm gonna cut off the excess that goes over the edge and flip through it periodically to decide what my next la layer is going to be. Moving along, we're moving into the orange and reds. And I've got some lovely gel prints and patterns. This one's a magazine paper. You're not limited to your own gel prints or collage papers. You can use scrapbook papers. You can use magazine pages. As long as there's an interesting color and pattern in there, go to it. I grabbed these petals. This was from a flower stencil that I had. And again, I was sam trying something out. I ended up not using it, but this was left in my stash. And so again, here, I'm just going to put this down in the middle of this page. Again, I am experimenting. I am trying something different. And I'm thinking maybe on the top, I'm going to put one color. Maybe on the bottom, I'm going to do another. I'm not 100% sure. I love the colors here. I love the contrast with it black. I could do some doodling on there, but you're going to have to stay tuned to see what I do to this in an, in an upcoming next episode. So I'm loving the Prussian blue and yellow and teal colors that are on these gel prints. And so I decided I actually ended up going into my filing cabinet to get a larger piece because I want it contrast. This one's light, but I wanted that dark teal. And I had a page that I had brayered paint onto, both the blue and the green. And now I'm just ripping a strip here. And while I'm doing this, I right from the first rip, I'm thinking underwater seaweed. So I'm thinking maybe this page might be end up with some collaged fish on it. So as soon as I have that idea, I will write that on the back of the page. I will often take my accidental art journal and sit with it and flip through the pages and see where it's at. And if I get an idea for the next step or focal image or something to add to it, I write it down. You never know when inspiration strikes. But you have to put your eyes on it. You have to touch it. Now I could have filled the entire page with these collage papers. I don't do that in this session for any of the pages, but you can take the collage papers and cover the entire page by ripping strips and overlapping them. but typically you need larger sheets. And here I'm working with, for the most part, um, leftovers. If I recognize a stamp or stencil that I've used in the gel pr print or the collage paper, I will write that on the back of the page as well because at some later state, I may want to dig out that stamp or stencil. 
Now the Accidental Art Journal is a great place to try out new product. And I just got this faded type stamp. And I thought I am going to stamp, get out some my archival ink and stamp this on and break the page. I have that blue bronze color, which is very vintage to me. So I'm adding to it. And I love, love, love this faded type stencil it's got some strip script here and larger letters smaller letters there's some numbers i think i'm going to get a lot of use out of this stamp set i'll put a link to this stamp set and any stencils that i may have used on the pages So here I'm putting the colors and we have that Prussian blue mixed with bronze gel print and the link tiles, which is the turquoise. Now, both of those read very vintagey, but both of these are on tissue paper. So even when I glue them down, some of that stamping peeks through. So I just want to get a base to do something with a vintage feel. And I'm thinking to myself that I can come back and do more stenciling with that linked tiles stencil. This one kind of was off kilter, so I lifted it up and glued it back down. I don't think this was on tissue paper. This was on deli paper. Tissue paper would not allow me to do that. But deli paper is a little more forgiving. So this was a stencil from Big Wreath. And again, I was doing a mock-up for something. I was trying something out. And I just thought it was too lovely to throw out. So it's been in my stash for you know, a long time. So today I'm going to rip it up and add to it. Add, add it to the page. And there's lots of different colors of green. There's lots of variation already in there. And I'm thinking this page is, is definitely going to be something garden, spring, along those lines. Because that's a little thicker paper, I'm switching it up from my fluid matte medium to my matte medium gel. Now, some of these pages have been gessoed. Some of them, they're raw pages. So some you're not going to see the lines, some you will see the lines, but then you just work that into your page. So this type of activity is a great activity to do if you don't know where to start, just go through your gel prints, your collage papers, pull out some and start gluing them down. Just the process of moving that brush back and forth sometimes gets the creative juices flowing. And if you don't have an accidental art journal, you could be just breaking pages in this way, starting a page, starting a background. I'm attempting to do different colors so that I have some variation to work off of. So I can use different focal points and different things. Now I have an idea right now and I just grab my yellow paint, my bright yellow and some gesso and I'm just gessoing over. I just needed to add yellow. So instead of writing the note on the back, I just grab the paint and I'm adding it to the page. 
I have some beautiful yellow crocuses that are blooming outside right now. And I think that was the inspiration for this yellow green that you see here. Now I'm grabbing a baby wipe and I'm wiping it off of the collage papers. And that works because there was a coat of gel medium on there. And I haven't wait, waited for the paint to dry. I'm just continuing on. I look, look over and I see this Swiss dot stencil out from another, I haven't put it away yet. So I grab a darker yellow, cadmium yellow, I think. And I'm just adding another pattern to it. So this background got very done, but inspiration struck. So that's when you finish a page. That's when you add to a page when you're inspired to do so. Then I had more yellow paint. So I fl flipped to this one that I used with my foam stamps and I'm just adding, I grabbed another stencil that was out. This is the kaleidoscope stencil and I'm just collaging that on. So I've got black, white, and yellow. Lots of contrast here. Lots of pattern. I like the kaleidoscope stencil with some of the stamping that works well in my mind. So let's look at the pages that we have. We've got the teal and violet color, the waves, this one, I don't know. And then I grabbed this circle and I'm thinking I could incorporate that. So I'm just going to leave it on this page. I've given myself some challenges. This one very much underwater. It reminds me of seaweed. So like I said, I can see myself collaging some fish onto that. Vintage vibe. I think I'll be adding more stenciling for with the link tile stencil. Loving the contrast of this one. Not sure if I need to do more or if I'm going to almost call this one done. Sometimes simple is very effective. Black, white, and one color. This one is almost a finished page. I was inspired to add more color and more pattern. But again, I just used what was on my desk. This one cutting the square, something I've never done. Again, we'll see where I can take that. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Accidental Art Journal. I hope you have an Accidental Art Journal. So go make marvelous out of the discarded. Close-ups are here. Go get creative.